What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Event Marketing Redefined. We are live at Exhibitor Live. We are day two. I am here with Itan Magid. He's the CEO of PopShap. They're an interactive solution provider in the tech space. Itan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. So tell me a little bit about sort of the products that you have and how they're used in trade shows and events. The best way to describe us, we're a solution provider for both organizers and exhibitors. Okay. Focus on the exhibitors. Uh, we have interactive screens, LEDs, but we also create software and content for the experience. Mm. And we provide the full solution. Nice, man. Tell me what's trending right now. What are you seeing of your solutions? Like what's what's popular? What's being used by exhibitors? I think it's evident that the... Uh, the space needs to be more interactive mm -hmm. and, and bring the attendee through an activation funnel and not just here's a big booth and oh. you like what we did, but mm -hmm. I think the software part comes into play. The trends I see right now in the LED world is a forced perspective, immersive content. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to lead that trend in the next couple of years is how you interact with interactive kiosk and affect that content. Yeah. Tell me about the software side of things, right? Because you guys... It Obviously, it's cool when you have the technology. <clears throat> a lot of the questions that we get from event marketers, the clients, and people are like, oh, that's cool. I'd like to use it. The questions that I'm coming is, how do I use it the way that I use it? But more importantly, what you're talking about, sort of like the creation or implementation on the software side. So tell us about that. Right. So we're a custom agency when it comes to your solutions. Okay. However, we do have the, the template solution for exhibitors that want something quick that mm -hmm. works for other exhibitors. Okay. So we can do both. It's like reusable, essentially. Reusable, you can use essentially. Okay. Not off the shelf, but a lot of components. Our widget-based library is, mm -hmm. is a component-based, so you can reuse the Wheel of Fortune, the matching yeah. game. Okay. These are things you can reuse all, over and over. Which of those has been big? The Wheel Anything of Fortune it, Wheel has got to be. I, I mean, say. if you go into Vegas, the Wheel of Fortune is a big uh, it's a hit. A big hit. Uh, I think the matching game, the fact that you can, uh, you're competing with other attendees, you yeah. come back to see if someone beat your score, gives value to the exhibitor because yeah. they return customers. The Wheel of Fortune, how is it played? Get, give our audience like like a description of what it looks like, how it's played, all, all that. Just like it sounds, it's a Wheel of Fortune where you can customize the gift that you can land on. Mm -hmm. You can also customize how often the attendee will land on. And then once they actually win something, they get an email instantly so they can validate oh. that it's an actually valid email. And is it on like a touch screen? Is touch it on screen. an LED video wall? Is it? So it's both. It's both. interactive okay. uh, stand-up kiosk or table. Mm. You can connect that to a big LED and make a big hoopla of the mm -hmm. whole experience. And yeah. it's, it's a fun one. Yeah. No, that sounds cool. I like, I think there's such a time and place for those things, engagement wise, especially when you're creating themed environments and plugging those in engagement wise, like on the floor, what's been popular for exhibitors using it? How are they using it? Are they tying in their raffle gifts to it? What's been working? It's that and their content. One of the widgets we have is a trackable widgets where we actually see the engagement the ROI on, mm -hmm. on the investment that they bring in when you're using interactive. So it's just one more step Okay, so they invested money in the mm -hmm. technology. What worked for them? Mm -hmm. They can change widgets from one show to another if they do multiple yeah. shows. And I think just combining their assets and products, you know, we have companies that have very large products. Mm -hmm. Bringing a kiosk instead of the product saves them money and still gives that attendee the engagement that they need from the yeah. exhibitor. Interesting. So we're talking about like custom content, right? So you're helping them create customized content versus like, a wheel of fortune or something. Correct. So tell we, me about that. We do have we do custom content and. Uh, uh, production. Mm -hmm. We also use a lot of partners for that part of our business. A lot of our partners are here in this show oh, cool. and they'll bring us business using mm -hmm. our hardware where they do the content. But I, I think the content is the leading conversation here. Yeah, yeah. You're dealing with B2B here, not the end client. The B2B, mm -hmm. they came from the world of exhibit hardcore. They're building something. Now mm -hmm. they have to transition into the technology and content mm -hmm. and they need to learn and understand how to do it. How to apply it. Yes. I think it's interesting you said trackable. Everything we do in our booth is trackable. So that was a big conversation yesterday, right? I talked to like six or seven CTSM program people. Tell me about how it's trackable and, and how they can utilize that moving forward, like in terms of measurables and results and things like that. So everything is heat map trackable. Mm, nice. uh, on top of that, we do have the lead gen aspect of it. Every exhibitor can log in live to our app and see how many uh, uh, leads they captured, mm -hmm. how many people applied for a specific program, how many people send PDF products to their to mm, themselves for a follow-up. So it's all trackable that way. That's really good. Have you seen any of your clients 
or anybody who's used it, sort of a case study where they've used it like exceptionally well, where like you saw the outcome and the output and you're like, damn, that's good. Like that's been better than, you know, some of the others. Yeah, we've seen it a lot in CBDs exhibits. Uh, we see a lot in SaaS programs. Okay. They use it very well to key on the demo part of the show. So they use our stand-up screen to lure someone in, quote unquote, to mm -hmm. the booth with a game. Yeah. And then once they start the conversation, they bring them to the back of the house for a demo. We've had one show with, with uh, GE, one with CVS Health, yeah. where uh, they generate 400 leads a day on interactive screen, on which one is screen. pretty impressive. Pretty impressive, yes. On one screen. That's right. So just drawing somebody in for a game or something and then being able to sort of engage with them there and then move them through sort of like a process. Absolutely. One of the, I think, most, most successful activation we had with Keller Williams, who's a okay. shepherd client, where they wanted testimonials for their employees. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. It was a video selfie uh, widget that we built for them. Mm -hmm. I think we got over 2,400 submissions in two days of a trade show. There was wow. a line. So it's very impactful. Mm -hmm. And the content for the marketer after the show, that asset and the content can, can, can go a long way. What would be like your advice for an event marketer working for a brand, right? They have trade shows or events and they are interested in using an interactive technology, like a solution like you have. What, what's some advice that you would have for them to get started, to get in the right direction? I think to get in that direction, you have to have a plan. You have to have a lead gen plan. It's not just, you're not going to bring screens and attract people just mm -hmm. because you have a screen. Secondly, I've seen our clients, sometimes they take the kiosk, but they still sit at the booth. You still have to engage people, okay? Mm -hmm. That's half the job. Now, with the rise of, of AI, as we know, these AI agents that we're creating, we're, we're, we're doubling to a lot of AI agents to attract the attendees to start mm -hmm. conversation, are going to be an add-on, but not a replacement for the yeah. person at the booth. Yeah, that's interesting. I think a lot of times people in the booth get a little lazy. Yes. Right? You can have the engagement, you can have the pieces, but you have to be having the conversation with somebody. You have to be showing it to them. You well, have to yeah. Imagine you walk in and you see two people sitting in the booth. Mm -hmm. You're not going to engage the, 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 there's a social aspect to being in a trade show. Yeah. And a screen cannot replace that. Yeah. The best AI agent with uh, deep faking is not going to do that. <laughs> you still have to engage, get up and have a conversation yeah. and use the technology to your advantage. Yeah. I like what you said about being able to have singular kiosks or interactive spaces, right? And then being able to track off of those. I had a guest on my show. Her name is Debbie Kemp. I mean, she has a cool title. It's like Senior Experience or Manager or something with Canon Medical. And she heat maps a lot of her spaces and different stations and demos and things they do. And she literally said, she goes, I will make a change mid-show based on the information you're talking about. She's like, I will move a kiosk, change something, change the engagement piece. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I, that's, I, I love that about that. And, and I think our clients are doing that. We have our content platform and our widget base. You can actually move. You can change. If the kiosk is not being touched with two minutes, you can change the content mm -hmm. during the show to see what works, what doesn't yeah. work. But with all the technology, and I'm all about technology, I think the booth has to also be inviting. It has to be a space yeah. that people want oh, to yeah. visit. And obviously, your product has to work, right? You know? Yeah. It all goes together, right? You right. guys are adding into an experience that, like, we are building and creating, right? So it, That's right. it goes hand in hand. I mean, companies like myself would come to you and say, hey, we have this awesome theme. It's themed. It's concepted. Here's the value prop that the client has to their audience. Here's the message they're trying to convey. Let's engage them creatively. And Let's that's the conversations. Yes. The B2B conversation that we get here, you know, we partner with classic exhibits yes. and all of their distribution partners, they come to us with a challenge slash ask. Mm -hmm. We design this. How can we add the interactive value? Yeah. Anyone can put a screen. What's yeah. the interactive value? I like that. What's going to bring ROI? And we have constant conversation. This is one of the biggest reasons we're exhibiting this show. What's kind of like the coolest ask you've had? What's, what's, what's a unique one you can share? So we have an upcoming show where we're designing an immersive experience where you'll be able to a touch screen on an iPad, mm. change the content on a first perspective uh, content. So it's a car company. I can't mention their name, but we're going to change the color of the, the, color of the car. Cool. We're going to open the doors. You can mm. move the car. Love that. All in an interactive, immersive experience with LEDs. So we're excited about that. So being able to do it with your hand, essentially. Exactly. And kind of navigate through a product or something tangible that maybe not, you know, funny now that we're now that we're talking about this one of uh, my guests yesterday she was talking i was like hey what's like what are you struggling with right now what do you want to do differently or you know i'm trying to pull out where she's trying to get to with things you know she brought up something so cool she's like well i want i want to run these demos without my product actually being there and i was like interesting but 
she has a sound factor to what she does. So she was like, that's where I'm struggling. But I think interestingly- There is a solution for that. Yeah, so, okay. There's so sound domes. There's, I went to NAB and I saw these speakers are so directional that only the person inter interacting with that product can actually see them. And, and speaking about big products they have to bring to shows, mm, if yeah. you take that out of the equation of your budget mm -hmm. and you're replacing it with technology, you're going to have more of a Shipping. Ask. It's exactly. sustainable. I mean, it's sustainable. sustainable as well. That conversation is going on all the time. Need, you need to generate something because now you didn't bring your big truck or whatever it is that your, your product is, yeah. but you have to wow the attendee. I think that some of the experiences that we created were not just the wow factor. It's also, okay, so someone played with, the, with this experience but did you get the lead? And mm -hmm. what's the post effect of that uh, experience? I think it's really interesting, the piece you touched on where you can use technology to really navigate a product and not like you're on a website. Right. <laughs> I mean, that that doesn't cut it for somebody. You can bring a laptop for that. Exactly. Right. You're talking about sitting there on a big screen, being engaged, breaking things apart, being dynamic and going into stuff to be able to see what it's like, let's say it's a car, to sit on the inside and what the handle looks like. Correct. We call it a designer view. Every product has a designer that designed the product. Yeah. You want the design of you into that product. You want to almost feel like you're touching it. And, and that's what's going to lead the next two years in innovation and trade shows. Yeah. For a lot of the event marketers here, how can they pitch putting this into their program? Because there's a cost, right? I and mean, there's a cost for software, right. custom software creation, the, obviously the technology itself. It almost becomes a whole other budget line item at times that it has to be segmented out. So what's your advice to them to go higher up and say, hey, I want to do this. It's going to cost this. My biggest advice is take baby steps. Yeah. Don't go into a 20 by 20 booth and try to sell in the world. Mm -hmm. Try to get a buy-in on the technology first. with Something small. small. Something small. The first kiosk. Get them in, used to the technology. I can, I can tell you that some exhibitors have old school salespeople that are very, you know, not yes. against, but they don't want the technology. I know. So there's a pushback. So ease it in. Introduce the technologies in steps. Don't bring an LED one day and say, this is our new technology. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest advice. A lot of them are trying to take on a big ask. And, and it's a mentality shift from going to no technology to something that technology I think you have to do in steps. What's like super basic? What's like the most basic, simple thing you think that people can just plug in? Interactive kiosks. You can place it anywhere in your, in your booth. Yeah. You can move it around. You can customize the colors. You can custom the actual vinyl. It's a simple way. The software is very easy to create. And it's like a step and repeat software. You don't have to have it cr it's created for you. Yeah. Exactly. You can yeah. create one software for multiple events. You can change the, nice. the assets and the content per Love event. That. Very easy. It's probably our 90% of our, our, mm. our exhibitors, that's what they use. And you can track leads, you can measure, you the can gain all that information from it. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Itan, it was great having you on. Yeah, I appreciate it. You guys it. have cool stuff. I think it's a super necessary part of this industry that exhibitors, people running events, event marketers, they need to be tapping into. And I think the advice of starting small and growing into it is really, really good. And hopefully more people do it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah, man. Thank you. All right, thank you.